last part, leveraging network to grow a career. And that's really, for me, the secret sauce to all my programs and uh, successes with clients is it's the secret sauce. Because in the end, when, when I see people talk about resumes and applications and all that, yeah, it's almost like a, it's the nice to have to enter in the process but it's just the first step. So that's not going to make a huge difference. You know, even if you have the brightest resumes and the best education and the right font on the resume and all that, that might get you through the first step. But if you want to get the interviews and get the offer in your hand, uh, that could make the difference. Having this network that's going to put your resume on top of the pile. And that's really what I call the hidden uh reality so you have the reality that you see online that you read blogs etc my youtube channel is also the i mean i share some of the hidden things but it's what you and whatever you observe online is is uh, what everyone else can see but there's the hidden things meaning that things you could only get by being in an event for example by observing people so you don't even need to actually talk sometimes Going to an event and just observing, you can learn a lot on how things get done. It's a little bit like when you come to a company, there's the polit political uh, atmosphere, you know, who goes to lunch with whom and who talks to whom and all these things are not going to be in your process book or handbook. So those are the things you don't learn in school, basically. In school, you learn to get a degree in something and you get hard skills, but you're not going to get the hidden on how things get done. And I didn't know it either. I learned through trial and error but no one taught me those things you know when you enter a company observe people see what happens etc try to have lunch with the right connections etc so uh, basically for me it comes down to you have the hidden market and the open market so the open market again is what everyone else can see so you're in huge competition maximum candidates for very few jobs that's what you don't want because it's highly competitive uh, and your chances of getting through is going to be tough. Now, what you want is the left-hand side. You want the hidden market. You want minimum competition there with uh, basically opportunities when they're not even opportunities. So you talk to a manager who may have a need at some point, but doesn't know it yet. That's the idea. Because probably if they like you and if they get along with you and if they see you have the solution they're looking for, they may say, hey, you're the right person for the job. So it happens to me all the time. When I go to events, the way it works, uh, for example, is that I would know someone, or maybe I don't even know the person, but they see me, so they, they're like, oh, this is great. And maybe they ask me for a few favors online. You know, could you introduce me to this person? Or do you know anything about? I had the experience uh, recently where someone would say, do you know any anything about employment in Switzerland? Do I need to report this? Or... Do I need to go to this office, et cetera? And I just replied. I just say, yeah, this is what you need to do, et cetera. And then people will see you as a resource. And then when they need something, then they will say, oh, you know what? There's this great resourceful person. What's her name again? I just talked to her the other day. And then they will immediately put you in the front line. So that's how you get those good jobs is by being a resource that people know and, and will favor when and if they have the need for a job. So it's a long-term process. It's not immediate because maybe you talk to people and they have no needs, but maybe six months later they do. And it doesn't matter because maybe in the urgency we'll go here and find an okay job that you're not so happy with just for the sake of it. But because you nurtured this part right here and you are still networking and you're still building your connections, then at some point someone will offer you something better. So you want to have like your nurturing uh, field there, your, your contacts that you have in the back end, where you always have an open door. So it doesn't matter what happens here. Even if you do get a job and you get fired, which is what happened to me, remember, and I had nothing, I was really naked, so to say, because I had no plan B, which is really a big mistake. Everyone should have a plan B, even a plan C, I would say. So don't be like me in 2007, you know, even if you do get a job, you always have something going on on the side. So, you know, maybe a side gig, maybe uh, you're trying to set up your business. Maybe you're talking to people already 
who may be offering you something down the road. So uh, you're nurturing things all the time. So this is very different than when I started working, for example, when you had a job and you just were hired until you were let go. But now you have to nurture your, your, um, your career. You know, you have to have contacts. So some of the networking basics is basically, in my view, things that uh, you need to define your objective. So when I see a lot of people networking, they don't have an objective. So they're hitting a little bit like a hit or miss, like, okay, well, you know, uh, and then they tell me, well, I go to events and I don't meet anybody or it's not the right people, et cetera. Well, you need to have a little bit of a plan. If you don't know where you're heading to, you can't, you can't head towards it basically. So you need to have the goal of, I want to find a job as an accountant in Geneva by the end of the year. Okay, do a little bit of research. Where are the accountants at in Geneva? You know, where could I find them? Maybe the accounting uh, professional uh, uh, groups and stuff, or, you know, it's how you think. So you need to have your objective. I always say if you're new to networking, it's good to have the meet my community objective where it's very low key and you're just out there to have a drink and listen. Listen to people, observe, and maybe you shake hands once in a while. Maybe you don't at the moment, but you know what I mean. You just go there to observe. And, and then you'll get more confident. You'll see a little bit what needs to happen. And then you can move to other objectives. But just get comfortable with your community, with the, the famous how things get done I just talked about. Uh, you need to understand the context. So then you can have an objective to get a job, to get feedback, to get clients. Uh, and that's going to take a different strategy. So if you get if you want to get clients, you're not going to go to the same places maybe as someone wants to be an accountant. You know, everything is in what you want. So if I want to be a Hollywood uh, celebrity, where are the places I need to hang out at? This is not going to be the same as someone who wants to be an HR person or finance person. So uh, location, location the type of events, the type of people that are going to be there. But that's a little bit of research that I won't get into in one second. So online networking, I just want to touch base on that because in 2020, I think it's one of the resources uh, on how you get uh, a little bit ahead in terms of networking. So uh, it's very tough right now to go to events, even though in Switzerland, you're still able to move around. I just saw that you need a mask at some point uh, also, but more or less, you can still go to, go to events. Uh, but most of the networking now is happening online. I really like personally online networking. I think it's a huge time saver, uh, whether it be via LinkedIn or Facebook, you can already identify the people that you need to identify and cut through the chase. You know, when you're in an event, what are the chances of meeting the right people? Very low. So with online, you target, you know, you say, I only want to speak to this type of people. So that eliminates the rest and you can chase, you can cut through the chase rather. So I like networking online. I use a lot of different social media because I'm testing them. I also want to see what works, where do I get the best results, etc. So I'm big on Facebook, LinkedIn, YouTube personally. Uh, so videos, uh, there's an application called Shaper. Uh, depending on where you're based, you may not be able to have so many contacts that show through your uh, feed, but it's great for employment because that's how my client found her job in 12 weeks. Uh, for uh, work opportunities, especially now the CEO has reoriented uh, the strategy towards, uh, you know, really making it a work application. So um, it's definitely uh, useful, I would say. Then the third thing is to join groups online, whether it's to start your own, which I would really encourage as well, because it gives you even more exposure. And again, this is the whole thesis of what I do is about how to become magnetic to get a job. And uh, so whether you do one-to-one -one coaching with me, you take my course, all the products basically that I offer, it's all about becoming yourself, who you're supposed to become, and then people come to you. So that means it's reverse. You don't have to do any work. People come to you. So, uh, But you need to do a lot of preparation for this, obviously. So it's less work in the long run, but it's a lot of work ahead of time. So it's the other way around then applying for jobs and sending a lot of resumes, et cetera, which seems like less work because you're only applying online. 
But in the end, it's going to be more work because you're going to have to do twice as much to have interviews, et cetera, et cetera. So uh, many groups, yeah, groups online are, are helpful. Uh, what I'm really a big advocate of is to start your own blog, doing your videos. Uh, so again, this is something that I would really, if we were to work together one-to-one, -one, I would build the strategy with you on how you could do it for yourself. Uh, based on your profession, et cetera. I'm a huge advocate now in 2020 of becoming your own brand. And everyone now is their own brand. You see a lot of I am such and such. Um, it's really the new thing now, especially on Instagram. So people now are a brand. That's how it is. So uh, if you want to be part of the group, basically, or you want to be visible is the word I prefer, you will have to go with the flow and build your own brand as well. Otherwise, what's going to happen is that you will have the people who have built a brand and they're the ones who are in the employment market and always find new jobs, et cetera. And then you will have the invisible community and those people will really uh, have a hard time to be seen. So build a good networking strategy by becoming magnetic. Uh, and uh, and then you will see that your network also increases and uh, and you get more opportunities that way. So I just want to show you, not that I'm saying I'm the best a profile that you can find online, this is not the case, but it's just to show you an example of what it would look like once you work on your LinkedIn and you actually put some uh, efforts behind it and really develop it. So uh, the first thing is that you want to have a good picture of yourself. This is very, very important for online social media. It's a little bit of an investment, but it's very much worth it. It makes a huge, huge difference. So in 2020, Branding is really putting your photo out there, professional photo. You want to have a professional banner or something that really looks like you and your profession. So you see I have my website on there, my tagline, Elevate Your Career to New Heights. Uh, I have a lot of keywords there uh, so that people can see what it is that I can do. And also it helps with the SEO. So when you're online, uh, LinkedIn will push the profiles that have good keywords and they will be more visible as well. So that's why I have a lot of keywords in there. This is my Shaper profile. So same thing, I have a few keywords there. Um, you can change them. Again, remember that you have to see what works. So you see I have a few keywords. This is just a snapshot I took, maybe because now I'm not really on it. Uh, I'm not developing my network on, on Shaper at this moment. But if I was to need to network more at some point, uh, I would definitely redo the keywords. But you will see that it's very easy. You get some matches and you do get some contacts there. And uh, in my online course, I talk about how to use Shaper to grow a network. And it's not very difficult. So my tips, my general tips for growing your network online would be quality over quantity, definitely. Uh, so pick, if you're not very comfortable with digital yet, pick one social media, maybe you use Facebook or LinkedIn, just one, you know, and do this one very well so that you're very visible and you're proud of it, you like when people see it, etc. Number two is etiquette. So uh, do not send resume unrequested. Uh, you don't want to go quickly too fast through the process. So uh, getting a job is a process. And that's the goal or, you know, getting a better job or what have you, if you're employed, it's the goal, but you don't want to rush through it. So you want to make sure you nurture, again, your, your contacts first. First, you want to see if it's someone you even want to exchange with before you send your resume. So don't push the resume around. It doesn't really work. Rather, try to engage. And we're working on this in the career partner group. How do you engage with someone? That's the question that keeps coming back. Well, the first thing that you need to do is actually look at the person's profile and try to understand a little bit what they do, where they're coming from. Do they have hobbies in common with you? Maybe they went to the same school. Maybe uh, they're trying to achieve similar things in their career. You know, I give the example in my YouTube channel of someone I reached out to. And when I reached out to him, I used the uh, swimming because I thought we both like swimming. And he talked a lot online about his passion for swimming, etc. And when I, when I first reached out to him, I thought this is a great introduction because if I had used more business type of things, I would have probably bored him to death and not get a reply because he gets so many uh, things like this. But when you use a hobby, when you use maybe something a little bit more 
uh, personal, then you have more chances of hearing back from the person. So put a little bit more thoughts into whoever you're connecting with. Uh, you don't need to rush into adding features for fee in online platforms. So be careful about this uh, because some of them are not necessarily going to give you a lot of return on investment. Produce content on a regular basis. So you want to uh, make sure that you produce, and I talk about that as well in the career partner group, uh, trying to learn how to build content uh, so that you're seen a little bit more. And it doesn't have to be huge content. It could be just a small thing that you do on a regular basis. Uh, use your work on your unique value proposition. Remember at the beginning when I talked about uh, the skills and the traits and the generic title. So you want to have that 100% covered also for your LinkedIn. This is the same thing. Use keywords that make sense. So it's not so much about which keywords will make it through the ATS. That's not the way you should be thinking, but rather which keywords are going to be very specific to me and represent exactly what I do. Because in the end, there will always be a human hand uh, in the process. So even if there's a computer looking at it, et cetera, you know, when you go through the interview, there will be a human there. So you want to make sure that whatever keywords you pick, are going to carry you through the process and not just through the first step. So it doesn't really matter if you make it to the first step, if you can't make it to the second step. You see what I mean? So think more about what are the keywords that really will uh, represent you very well. So work on that. Look at other people's profiles. That's another way also to grow your network. Uh, you know, you want to emulate your perfect, your, your favorite uh, people that you follow online, you know, your influencers or what have you, they know something about um, your market because they're already way ahead of you. Maybe they're two or three steps ahead of you in your field. So they're probably doing something right that you're not. So that's the easiest way. That's what I do. I just say, who's doing career coaching right now in the world? What are they doing? How are they present presenting themselves? What kind of events are they doing? And then I just get the, uh, I'm not copying because this is not uh, ethic, ethical, but you get the inspiration. So you say, oh, in my profession right now, people do a lot of webinars. So this is the way to do it. Or people in my profession tend to belong to this community. So I need to belong to this community. So you need to follow up with what's going on. And then the last thing, which is just as important as the rest, is to set reachable goals every week to ensure constant evolution. So again, in terms of goal setting, if you don't know where you're going, you're not going to get there. So uh, personally, I have a to-do list, so I have goals I need to achieve every day. But I think if you have a weekly goal, uh, then at least you know what you need to be focused on. But you also want to have a longer term goal, just like I have in my presentation at the beginning. I want to make people more autonomous financially and emotionally. That's my long term goal. Now, everything I do goes towards that. So what is your long term goal? You know, I want to become the number one accountant in Geneva. Or I want to become the number one family lawyer in Geneva or what have you. So what do I need to do now to get there? You know, which groups do I need to belong to? Who do I need to know? Um, you know, how do I need to portray myself online to get credible and to have more clients? So all these things, or to, to belong to the right company, if you're, if you're planning to be number one, you need to have credible companies in your background. So these are the things that you need to do to uh, grow your network online. So how do I know who will be a high potential as a career expert? Just putting the question out there while I'll put a, a drink, a sip of water. So I have one way of knowing who will be a high potential. Now I've worked with high potentials for many years. When I was in human resources, I was part of a lot of programs that dealt with high potentials and uh, basically um, it's called succession planning, which is a technical term. Who is going to be the next person up? So basically, there's one way for me to find out is an action taker. So if someone is an action taker, usually I know this person is going to have a good potential. And this is how companies also think about promotions and things like that. They look at, okay, who's actually really involved? Who's doing uh, a lot of... Um, activities that are relevant for the company and actually 
producing something. I mean, we used to have a saying where I worked where we say we don't want uh, talkers, we want doers. That was a huge thing. Whenever we went through an interview process with candidates, we said we don't want talkers, we want doers. So if you're a doer, you're going to be ahead of the game because there's so many people that talk and it can maybe get you through the first stage, which is to get hired. But once you're in the organization, you need to produce things. You need to uh, improve, you know, your department or do things, you know. So the people that tend to be successful are people who are not only able to, to make the speech or to do the talking, but they're action takers. They will create the new program or build the new uh, business model or what have you, depending on what you do. So these are the people that get the high jobs or the best jobs. They uh, they tend to be promoted more. They make more salary, et cetera. So that's where you want to be. You want to be in the action taking mode. And then if you're not, then you can expect that you will have the big salary, the big job, et cetera, because this is how the world works. You know, the more action you take, the more successful you will be. So just to end this uh, presentation tonight, this event, I just want to remind you again for people who say, well, how do I get to know more about all this? You know, how do I book a call with Isabel? Again, it's going to be on my website um, on, on under the video, isabellitzler.com. And on my website, you have a button, book a call now. And this is going to lead you to booking a 15-minute services discovery call. So you can find out more about how we can work together, what type of thing do you need the most right now that's going to maybe put you in the next step because you're stuck right now. Uh, we just we just get to see what works for you. Uh, again, I shared with you some of the results of my clients and what you could achieve. Uh, right now is a tough time, but even though uh, things are a little bit different at the moment, there are still people getting jobs. Just I was in Geneva the other day uh, at an event, and I hear around me, you know, two people got jobs during this NGO uh, event. Uh, so there's job offers that are proposed out there.